I'm Jennifer Angel, these are your stars, Gemini. Now the sun is in your 11th house this month and Jupiter in your sign. Now on the first of the month, like we kick off the, right at the start of the month, these two planets, the sun and Jupiter, or the sun being a luminary uh, Jupiter planet, are going to sextile. Now this is like an opportunity. It's a very um, favorable, uh, soft um, aspect. So when they connect it's like something can come your way because Jupiter is the planet of expansion and abundance and the Sun being our most powerful energy so but it's it's the type of transit Gemini that don't expect it just to like come and land at your feet it's like you'll get notice of something happening or somebody will present something to you um, or an opportunity through friends um, and you're going to have to step out there and sort of get it to make it happen, okay? So fate is one thing, but don't just not rely on fate totally. I mean, you do have free will too, so you want to sort of work with the destiny of life and sort of take control and take charge of your life as well. Now, career and money. So later in the month, there's an eclipse full moon in your sixth house, all to do with work. This is on the 25th. Okay, but what you don't want to do is over overdo it and take on too much. So a full moon in the sixth house can signify that uh, things are, you're going to get some conclusion on some areas of your life. If things have been unsettled or you've been waiting for some news to come through, then it can get some closure this month and you can bring that to an end and start off afresh. Fresh. Um, but the six houses also can tempt you to just take on too much. So here's the golden rule. It's always better to under promise and over deliver. Okay, so that way you don't put yourself into, well, first of all, you don't uh, disappoint anybody, but more importantly, you don't put yourself under undue stress because this is also an area of your health. So you want to not let your overall well-being fall to the bottom of the list okay now love and romance so venus and mars will move into your uh, 12th house so the sign before you taurus through the month on the 15th and the 20th so this will be a good time for you to reassess where you are in your personal life and more particularly with your love life um, be careful that you're not being too idealistic about you know where you are or what can be achieved and you want to be realistic about what where you go from here so don't try to ask someone to do the impossible I mean everybody has a little bit of compromise in them but um, as well as yourself but you know people will only change so much and they have to want to change to be able to um, you know alter what they're doing as well so nothing you can do is going to make someone change unless they want to so you want to like visualize how you and another person would fit together and so you know if you can get like at least how you would like your life to be then you can start sort of looking at where are the areas that you don't want to compromise on and where are the areas that you can okay and that way it's a little bit of give and take now my angel advice for the month is Mercury is out of its retrograde period now but it's still in what's called the shadow period and that's going to take up until April the 6th and what that means is on April the 6th it will actually transit back to the point um, that it, the degree that it was at before it went retrograde. So this is like the real time that any confusion can be sorted out. Now I'm only mentioning this to you particularly Gemini because Mercury is your ruling planet so any major decisions if you can leave them until the six or after then that would be best. If you can't still good to check all the details. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you have a great month. I'm Jennifer Angel. Bye for now.